Well, welcome, lords and ladies, to Her Majesty's Royal Birds of Prey and Falconry demonstration. So, how many of you are ready to see some birds fly? Excellent. We all found the correct stage. Well, welcome. I am Sir Robert Chesman. I am Her Majesty's Royal Falconer. I will be your host for this presentation. And I'm here representing an organization we call Wildlife Reveal. We are a nonprofit organization that travels throughout the land with all of our birds, and we present them not only for your entertainment, but most importantly, for your education. So I hope everyone has a chance to learn something here today. Before we get started, however, there are a few things I must ask of everyone. Now, first of all, with the exception of the bird I'm holding here, the rest of our birds will be in free flight, meaning no strings attached. So occasionally they may take low flights over the audience and amongst us all. So we simply ask, at no time should you reach up to pet the pretty birdies. <laughs> they are meat eaters, we refer to these as finger foods. <laughs> the second item, I always like to point out, we have several perches around the back of the audience in addition to one on our stage. Please be advised our birds will frequent these locations. They are fully flighted and do not always take the most direct path. For this reason, we also suggest you keep your eye on the birdie. This way we will all know the appropriate moments to duck. <laughs> and the last and most important request is if we have food items, most specifically, turkey legs. I would ask that you place those out of sight during the program. We have one bird in particular that has learned to identify the wrappers that turkey legs come served in. And so I'd hate to see you pace for such an item and have it taken by a bird. But now that I have said this, are you ready to meet the birds? Yeah. Yeah. I do have many birds for you, and the first sits here upon my hand. I always like to ask, do any of you know what this bird might be? Uh, kookaburra, this is correct. It is known as an Australian laughing kookaburra, and his name is Bonza. Now, for those of you that don't know, Everybody else hearing that too? No. <laughs> okay, it's not just voices in my head. That's good. <laughs> now, Bonza, for those of you that don't know, Bonza is a way of Australians to say that's awesome, incredible, or exciting. So hopefully he'll live up to that name. However, Bonza here, he is only six months old. He's actually a youngster, and kookaburras, they don't really learn to laugh until they are about a year old. Now, we've been trying to work with him and encourage him. You can hear that little voice. That's a baby voice constantly asking me for food. So, what do you think? Should we give it a try anyway? Yeah! All right, let's see if it works. Ready, buddy? All right, here we go. Coming up! Yeah. Really? <laughs> Might be all we get. One more try, buddy. Sometimes he laughs, sometimes he doesn't, but he's always making that baby sound. That's basically asking dad for food is what he's doing. And kookaburras will use a laugh to sort of gather their flock and uh, to set up territories. Even a certain laugh they use to warn others of danger. But you know, I can make it more exciting. So what do you say? Should we fly some birds? Yeah! So I'll tell you what, let me hop on some right back in here. I do have several birds to fly for you. Now the first hails from the southwestern deserts of the New World. It is known as a Harris hawk. And Harris hawks are very unique among raptors, for they are social out in the wild. They live in family groups called casts and even hunt as a team. Several getting on the ground and flush that prey in the open, while others might wait high above to ambush that prey. An intelligent adaptation for the desert, where food might be scarce. It is my pleasure to introduce you to one of our Harris hawks, and his name is Jinx. All right, Jinx, come on out here, buddy. Hi, I'm here, Jinx. I'm over here. There we go. Welcome, Jinx, to stage. Yeah. Get on your perch. It's not noble on the ground like a chicken. But Jinx, right here. There we are. Now, Jinx here, being a hawk, is a typical raptor. And what that means is that he has physical features that make him very different from other predatory birds. You see something else, like the kookaburra, for example. That bird might use his beak to catch his prey. Raptors, however, use their feet. And on the end of his toes are claws called talons. Those are his weapons. He will use his feet to grab its... It's an interactive program, by the way. Okay. He will use his feet to grab onto very large animals. And even though Jinx here only weighs about a pound and a half, he is quite capable of catching... 
should have warned everyone, if you duck, he'll only fly lower. <laughs> but you see, this bird only weighs a pound and a half, yet he is capable of catching prey the size of a jackrabbit, weighing maybe eight or nine pounds. Now, you are cutting close today, Mr. <laughs> now, if he caught something that large, it would be far too heavy to fly away with, and certainly big, too big to swallow whole. So they have to be able to rip their food into smaller pieces. Jinx, not to breathe. There we go. So you may have noticed his beak is hooked and curved downwards, and it allows him to rip and tear. That way he can eat quickly and consume mass amounts before other animals steal his prey from him. Back over here, Jinx. Bree, will you see if he'll go to the back corner for us? There we are. <laughs> Just a thought, as the bird flies overhead, you might not want to look up and say, what? <laughs> it's, it's trying to knock out his broken. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. <laughs> now you see, <laughs> his most impressive trait, though, is his eyesight. Jinx here, he can see about four to eight times better than you and I can, allowing him to spot his prey moving from quite a distance away. He can even tell what color it was, for raptors do see in color. In fact, we believe they see in a wider range of color than humans do, including infrared and ultraviolet light as well. Hey, that's our art. All of these traits allow him to do one thing incredibly well, so and this is Hunt. And I think we're hearing Tortugas. This will be an interesting show. <laughs> It's supposed to be a family show. No telling what we're going to hear now. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. That's right. The raptors, because they're so good at hunting, falcons for more than 5,000 years have employed the services of raptors, such as hawks, falcons, even eagles, to do that job. And you must remember it started long before the invention of items like the rifle, and is not only an efficient means of catching game, but a sporting one as well. And the most incredible part is that very little has changed in the art or sport. It's supposed to go that way, Jinx. To the back, Jinx! <laughs> Highly trained bird obeys my every command. Fly out to breathe. To the back. <laughs> That's just right. There we are. Now oh, come, man. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. That's right. Little has changed in the art or sport. We still use the same training techniques of positive reinforcement or the act of giving the bird a food reward. <laughs> Did you get the picture? You, tr you would have had a picture of the last thing a mouse sees before it dies. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> what do you say for Jinx? Has he done well so far? <laughs> it is Jinx's turn to go home. And I wish to see if he will glide from the back perch all the way into his release door. <laughs> Hopefully a little bit higher than that flight. But if this works, it looks impressive. So let's see. All right. Let's see if this works. All right. Turn around, Jinx. Jinx! Go home, Jinx! Go home. All the way. Believe it or not, uh, I did not have a chance to rehearse the birds on stage before this show, so this could be interesting, but they seem to remember what they're doing. It's a good thing. It's going good so far. So let's see here. Now, the next bird I want you to meet is different from the first two. The kookaburra and the hawk are diurnal predators. Diurnal is a way of saying day active. Of course, there are a set of raptors famous for coming out at night. In this case, we use the term nocturnal. So who comes out at night? Owls. Who? Owls. <laughs> Ooh. That's right. I took that out of my dad joke book. I do have an owl. In fact, I have one of the largest species of owls on the planet for you. It's known as a Eurasian eagle owl. Our eagle owl's name is Romeo. All right, Romeo, right out here, buddy. Come out here, Romeo. There he is. You're welcome, Romeo. Romeo, being an owl, he has adaptations that let him hunt very well at night. You might have already noticed, he has gigantic orange eyes. And his eyes are about the same size as yours and mine, yet he can dilate them much more than we can dilate ours. In fact, we believe they can see maybe as much as 100 times better than humans in the dark. And we have seen owls like this hunting for prey the size of a mouse from maybe a football field away using just starlight to see by. However, if they cannot see their prey, they can still find it. Wee! Back up here, Romeo. I'm over here. There you go. If they cannot see their prey, they can still find it with their incredible hearing. You may notice that he has a dark outline around the edge of his face on the other end of the bird. 
And you see his face is wide and flat. And all the fit let's go that way. Is that what he says, man? Anyone else? There we go. And all of the feathers on his face work like a satellite dish to scoop up sound, and it forces it into huge ear openings to the side of his head. This owl's hearing is so powerful, he can locate something like a mouse underneath snow or grass, capture it without even seeing it. They have another trait, though. The ability to sneak up on their prey. So you might listen as he flaps his wings. Romeo. I'm over here. There you go. Back up the stage. Romeo. As he flaps his wings, <laughs> as you float, as you flap, oh, right down here, Romeo, you can do it! There we go. And as he, boy, you are cutting close as well. <laughs> and you see, as he flaps his wings, he doesn't make any loud flapping noises. That's because the edge of his feathers are very soft. So that way, as he flies, he can sneak up on his prey, but even more importantly, he can listen to his prey as he's actively hunting and flying. And so, let me ask though, what do you think of Romeo? Is he impressive? Yeah. Yeah, so. I do need to see if he will fly all the way back into his door. He is supposed to fly from the back perch as well, back into the release door. We'll give it a try, so <laughs> Romeo, <laughs> to the back, buddy. Do that. All right. He's on his way. Now that bird, by the way, has about a four foot wingspan. I'm going to ask him to fly into this door that is only about, uh, well, a little less than two feet wide. So sometimes it takes some encouragement. So, Romeo, turn around, buddy. Romeo, I'm over, I'm over here. Use that great eyesight and hearing. Wee look, Romeo. <laughs> I should have explained owls. They're basically cats with wings. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look, Romeo, go home! I know what he's waiting for. He wants two Mises pieces. One, two. Romeo, right here. One, two. Oh, there he goes on his way. Right in the door. Now, I do have another bird to fly for you, and this one is completely different from all the others. To this point, you've met actual predators because the birds catch and kill their own food. Our next guest, though, is different because she is a scavenger, likes to find animals that are already dead. Many of you might have guessed I'm talking about the vulture. I do, <laughs> so you've been here before. <laughs> I do have a vulture, and this is the one that is so famous for sometimes running up and down the aisles looking for leftover turkey legs. So if you have food items, hide it from sight. And last year, she discovered that they make the most wonderful macaroni barbecue mac and cheese right back there. And by the end of the show, she was constantly flying over the picnic tables to raid them. Now, we're going to see. Hopefully this will work, but we'll give it a try. What do you think? Should we let her fly? Yeah. Oh, boy. Chaotic audience. This is going to be fun. <laughs> well, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our vulture, and her name is Ziggy. All right, Ziggy, come out here, girl. Ziggy. Ziggy. There she is. You're welcome, Ziggy. She needs a prayer. Ziggy here is a black vulture. You notice the black body, the bald black or sort of gray head. Back down here, Ziggy. Head, really? Ziggy, you're supposed to fly. Ziggy, fly down here. Over here. Ziggy, really? She's trying to get Christy to give her an extra treat is what it is. All right, Ziggy, back down here. Don't, don't, Ziggy! Look alive! Just look alive, everyone! I'm not even sure what that means. But. Oh, first show of the uh, season. It didn't take long. <laughs> All right, you want to watch her from there, Chris? Oh, she's going back. Tell you what, walk her to the middle aisle for me. <laughs> Remember, you guys asked for this. Oh, she's going, she's going all the way to the food trailer. We're going to just... <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're going to be buying more mac and cheese for guests this weekend. <laughs> now, thank you, Christy. Tell you what, I'll meet you halfway. Now... <laughs> Vultures, though, they have features that let them stay clean and healthy, like their bald head. And, all right, Ziggy, right here. Right here, Ziggy. Right here, Ziggy. There we go. And you see, 
The bald head lets her eat things like dead animals, often sticking her head inside the dead animal to get to the internal organs. Now, if she keep going, get on that perch. Keep going. There we go. Now, see, if she has eating habits like eating dead animals, she'd be covered with bacteria and leftover food. The bald head lets it dry up and flake off, and the sun's ultraviolet rays can kill germs growing there. And the sun can. Ziggy! Ziggy, thank you for here. Aim her this way, Bree. All right, Ziggy! Up here! Ziggy! There we go. <laughs> she has an amazing immune system, ingesting as much as a hundred times the salmonella and botulism. Where are you going? Okay. Here, tell you what, Ziggy. Right back over here. This is going to be a long day. All right. Now, you see, she can ingest as much as 100 times the germs that humans can without even getting sick. And also, vultures like this, just like hawks and owls, are immune to most diseases that mammals might carry, like hantavirus, mice, and rat spread, home cholera, and Ziggy. Just aim her this way, Bree. Look, Ziggy, right here. Th walk, run, I don't care. On the benches. Where right here, Ziggy. Where no, we're not going for the barbecue again. There better be 20s in that donation basket. But you see, she also has, oh, did she find more food? Did is the audience still having fun? Yeah. Just heard her this way. She doesn't want to jump on your head. There you go, Chrissy. Come on, Ziggy. All the way over here. She's just doing her job, cleaning up the environment. So, come on, Ziggy, all the way. I, I wanted them to get a good look at the birds. I didn't intend under the benches. Keep going. You're right here. <laughs> bad behavior. <laughs> Your, my, my parents warned me as a bad influence. Yeah. Now, tell you what, we'll send it over to you again, Bree. Now, <laughs> all of these traits, though, let her do that important job of cleaning up the environment. And people, people look at a few other things like her beak. It's long and skinny. It's not very dangerous or strong, but it's great for reaching in the dead animal. And her feet are different, her claws are dull, and they are built for, her feet are built for walking, as you can see. And people tend to look at vultures, and they think with the walking feet and the weak, get your walk, run, keep going. You have wings for a reason, bird. All right. But you see the, the walking feet and the beak, they don't seem uh, very dangerous. So people often ask how a vulture defends themselves. Well, if you corner a vulture, they cut them off, run away or fly away, would not attack you, would not even try to bite you. In order to frighten you away, they would vomit on you. <laughs> Can you imagine what that consists of? Well, today it would be back with barbecue, macaroni, and cheese. And, you know. But nonetheless, they have an important job in our environment. So, after all, what do you say for Ziggy? <laughs> now the tricky part, getting her to go home. And she is supposed to fly from that back perch all the way into her door. So see if she'll jump up. Keep going, Ziggy. No, what do we find? Keep going. Keep up, oh, really. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, Ziggy, go home, Ziggy. Shh, shh, shh. Go home, look, Ziggy, all the, don't you do it. I see you looking at that trailer. Ziggy, look, shh, shh, shh. all this, Ziggy, Ziggy. No, no, she's gonna, she's gonna jump. Ziggy, look, I have treats right here. Backup plan. Ziggy, right here, look. All right, thank you, Christy. Look, Ziggy. Go with the backup plan. Look, no, you do it. Don't you, all right. It works like this. Ziggy, look, right here. All right, Ziggy, go home. We're flying. We're flying. We're flying. We're launching. That is an insanely smart bird. And did you see the first thing she really did was go looking for that mac and cheese again. <laughs> very, very smart bird. Now, I know that might not have been a perfect flight, but I still consider it a successful one. But you must understand, I measure success differently than everyone else. For if I end the show with the same number of birds I started with, it was a successful program. <laughs> well, I do have one more bird to fly. Should we try one more bird? <laughs> Well, then let me ask, do any of you know what the fastest
fastest animal on the planet is? Peregrine falcon. Peregrine falcon. You're absolutely right. Peregrine falcons have been clocked in dives in excess of 244 miles an hour, making the fastest animal on the planet. Now, you are in luck. I do have a falcon. However, this is not a peregrine, but it is a very special little bird known as an aplomato falcon. And our aplomato falcon is right back here. So let me step back here and grab her. Now, aplomato falcon, thank you, David, that'll work. Let me just put it right here. Aplomato falcons are found on the Texas coast all the way through Central and South America. And our aplomato falcon's name is Vegas. Right here, Vegas. There we are. So, will you welcome Vegas to the stage? <laughs> Do not be fooled by her size. This is an impressive little bird. Hopefully I can demonstrate that in a moment. The way I wish to do this is by what we call lure flying. So lure flying is a game of keep away that the falcon always eventually wins. And I have in my hand a lure. It's a fake leather bird. It has a food reward attached to it. Vegas has been trained to attack this like she would attack prey in the wild. Now, historically speaking, this is how Falconer exercises his bird, keep it healthy and ready for the hunt. In our case, it allows me to show off some of their speed, agility, and skill. Now, flying a falcon on the stage is rather tricky because the trees and the building are rather close. But I'm willing to give her a shot. What do you think? Should we let her fly? Yeah. Oh, it's easy for the audience to say yes. <laughs> as long as she doesn't develop a taste for barbecue, we're good. All right, so what I've learned is I'll put her on that perch right there. And I'll kind of fly her down the aisle as a runway. And let's see if we can get her to show off. All right, girl, you ready? Get, oh, you're going to clean off the fur, Charlie. Right. Here we go. You ready, Vegas? <laughs> really? Okay. All right, let's try this again. Vegas. <laughs> exactly the opposite problem here. All right. Here we go. Ah, let's go, Vegas. You're getting hungry. Very hungry. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> See what here is Naughty Nautical's chanting, eat it, eat it. Ah, 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 ah. Let's go, girl. Hi. Fastest animal on the planet, right there. <laughs> Everywhere but at me. Ah, ah, ah. Let's go. Almost. <laughs> make it much easier. Ah. Ah. Right oh, right. Oh, right. Now, I want you to notice how she flies right up in the tree. Oh, no, she's still flying. Here we go. Now, he's landed on the pine tree. Okay. Now, you see, you weren't supposed to just fly up in the tree. They can go anywhere and see a bird sit on a branch. All right, Vegas. <laughs> oh, there she is. Okay. I got that in my eyes. Come on, girl. <laughs> ah. Here we are. Now, falcons have pointed wings, and the pointed wings have less drag or less air friction. So that way, they do not slow down nearly as much when they dive. But also, they have a very uh, lost sight of her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> And the long tail lets them maneuver and steer very efficiently. The longer tail needs more surface area so they can make precise turns at high rates of speed. If you've ever wondered, though, why falcons have to be fast, it's because they catch and eat other birds. And they might get high above them, fly in large circles, and then they'll stoop or dive straight down, reaching those incredible speeds, and they usually punch the prey right out of the air. All right, one, more, one or two good passes. Let's go, girl. <laughs> At Vegas, we have to do this until everyone applauds. That's your cue, Vegas. <laughs> everyone. Vegas, give her a hand. She's good. Well done, girl. Very well done. Now, at the moment, she is down on her lure. To her, that's the same thing as catching prey. She has her wing spread and her tail fan. It's called mantling. She's trying to hide her prey from all the rest of you. <laughs> I do need to retrieve the lure to put her away, but if I reach down there and take it from her, she will see me as a thief. I'll lose the trust relationship I need to have with all the birds. So instead, I wish to trade her a cut-up piece of food for her lure. You ready, girl? Right here. What are you doing? No. Are you... All right, right here, girl. Ready? Are you hiding between my feet? <laughs> Making this difficult. 
Ziggy, it's our Ziggy. You see where my brain goes. Maybe cute from your point of view. You're not the one with a predatory bird underneath your kilt. <laughs> you have to let go. You have to let go. Right here. So one more time, everyone. Vegas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are Wildlife Revealed. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the education and the preservation of our planet's wildlife. If you enjoy our message and enjoy our birds, I'd like to help us help the environment. We have donation boxes on the purchase, donation baskets with myself and all the apprentices. All the money we raise goes to help support our educational efforts, take care of our animals, <laughs> and better obedience training for the birds. <laughs> and it only takes $5 to feed one of these birds for a week. And this year, we even have fantastic wooden pins for only $10. Now, well, the most important question I have, though, have you enjoyed seeing the birds here today? Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Enjoy your stay. I'll be in the back if you'd like to take a closer look, ask questions, or take photos. We also have digital donations on the purchase. You can scan if you would like. And we also have information on school programs and other presentations as well. Thank you so much.